thing outweigh out where that gate is mm -hmm. and brought it in because it was too much. The yep. Came. Sure. So <clears throat> after that, um, the deer start coming under the deck here mm -hmm. to get into the garden. Uh oh. So <clears throat> I have constructed a barrier here just with deer netting. Right. But I, <clears throat> I would like to get the lattice on this side okay. so they can't come under this way. Okay. Uh, so that was one thing. And then uh, I was going to start scrubbing it and then, you know, uh, putting another coat of paint on it. And I felt funny when I walked on it. Mm. So then I discovered that that post, it's right under here. You feel it. You had, feel it. Yeah. Had, had um, yeah. They poured cement around it, yeah. Yeah. so it rotted from the bottom. Oops. So it's not even you know, yeah. doing anything. I can show you that. Yeah, we'll take a peek. So then, you know, I began questioning totally. <laughs> right. The deck. Sure. So I look it over and see what you think. Let me get this open here. This is my okay. invention here. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate the help. And this can go here. over somewhere. <laughs> About... Right. Just there you go. Good there. Shot. Okay. So this is what I have up here. So this is the <coughs> lattice had ended there, but uh, I store the mower under here. So what I would like is to have the lattice to about here and then have some kind of a access. sliding access so I can get the mower out. Okay. okay. I'd like to tell you what I see. What do you see? As a licensed general contractor. Okay, yeah. That you have a 2 by 8 floor joist mm -hmm. and 24 inch on center, mm -hmm. meaning the distance between the two. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you <clears throat> that the words we use in engineering is the proof of the pudding is in the eating, mm -hmm. meaning that it is holding the deck. Mm -hmm. I will also tell you that if I was to construct this today as it is, it would be a long way off of building code. Mm -hmm. okay. And I would also say that um, we have several ways to approach this. Okay. One way is what can we do to give you a strong and stable and safe deck? Okay. The option B is what can we do to bring your deck up to a minimum standard in building code? Okay. And obviously option B is a lot more expensive. Okay. And it would include <clears throat> probably the simplest thing. Um, Rusty. Sorry. Rusty, um, rusty. <laughs> yeah, we've got cracked joist here and dropped a little. Um, it's got a 16 foot span. One, yes, two, 16, three, four, five. That's a 16 foot span on a two by eight, which is um, it's it's too far. And everything in engineering is based on load and span. And the span being 16 foot, the load it carries is the 2 by 8. So um, <clears throat> what I would recommend doing is Charles, is that a 4 by 4 here? Uh, or is that a 2 by 4? It looks like a 4 by 4 right there, Lee. Okay, but I got inch and a half here. Is it, is yeah, it sticking out? Yeah. It is sticking yeah, out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what we could do, <coughs> there's so many things yes. with a single band here. Um, that we could put a girder, and I think that it lines up, and we can actually use these two by twos as knee a brace. Yeah cut um, and um, probably run on each side of the 4x4. Four four. All the way. Come back here. All the way up here. 
and um, actually, I would think we can take this. Well, we will support the deck with two temporary bracing on either side. Think come all we got here, and um, replace this four by four. And and this is an extraordinarily strong column, and. The wood we would use is ground contact, meaning that it's not supposed to rot within a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So we can replace this with another 4x4. Four four. And then we need an attach point <coughs> against the wall. Whether... I don't know how, how far this right here goes up right here. Sure. Might have to, uh, might have to, you know, have something in the, in the concrete, in the block here. Well, that's one option. Another one is to have. if we can dig down and pour shallow footing. Yeah, right here. And um, because this does not look like it gets wet. This is dry. That's an overhang. It is. It's, yeah. it's dry here. So th that the settling would be negligible. Yeah, it would. I, I would. And that, that actually might be the better option right there. Lee. So if we can take a line of sight between these two and I do not believe that the gutter will come into play but it's close I don't think it will. and take um, God, what is this oh, such a space got, <laughs> makes me uh, nervous we got six feet to here that's 12 feet and um, Two by ten doubled yeah. girder will fall okay. within a twelve foot span and still be on code. At least this part will be strong. And we could pour shallow footing, raise a third four by four without having to drill into the wall, and then we'll have three bracing points. All the way. Up. The double two by ten. It will keep some of this load off. And it'll it'll support all everything here so you won't have that bounce. That bouncing, yeah. And essentially what that would do was reduce your span from sixteen feet to eight. I see. Okay. And that would be on code as well. Oh, okay. okay. And um let me look. How are you nine? Sure. Thank you, ma'am. I'll just click that. I don't see any rot because here again that's supposed to be ground contact lumber and ground contact lumber is treated a little differently mm -hmm. so that the bottom of this post is strong. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so the economical approach is to run the double 2 by 10 straight across, put up the third 4x4 four four, so we'll have three points of support okay. and I believe and obviously replace the, the failed 4x4. Four and um, add your lattice structure. And we're probably going to have to frame the door out right here, you know, so you can, you know, access your lawnmower inside and outside. Yeah, my, I had thought just some kind of sliding thing. You know, I made that thing there. Just okay. basically, you know, it's to keep, and because that's, there already. I thought it would could slide behind there. You, okay, you want something that kind of slides just right, slides right I, behind there. I, okay. I, you know, my in my mind it was like a barn door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, something rather than. I mean, I don't know. And that's just what occurred to me. Yes. Is something that would work. Charles, um, uh, put your hand on a, a a brace or a girder. Just lightly touch it. Do you feel that? Yeah. Because one of the things is uh, a bracing, the deck is braced well, and I would call it from the north-south direction because it's bolted mm -hmm. to the house. Mm -hmm. But on the left-right, bracing is nothing more than a board going from this point high to the bottom of that low to stop that side-to-side -side movement. Mm -hmm. And I've got mixed emotions about advising that because I like to tell people the right thing to do according to building code. Okay. And I also like to tell them that this deck has been fine for a very long time. Yeah, I've been here 
17 years. And I don't want to over engineer anything. Mm -hmm. I also don't want to fail to mention things that I see okay. that, that would be helpful. But um, anyhow, to, to take basically a 2x6 and go from the top to the bottom you know, on at least one of these yeah, it's kind of, you know, bays, stable, yeah, stabilizer. so that it stops that rock. Okay. Very inexpensive thing to do mm -hmm. that would dramatically increase the safety of the deck. Well, I'm interested in that. Sure. You know. Okay. <coughs> um, I like the deck for a lot of good reasons, and I think that these are reasonably inexpensive repairs that'll help this deck serve another 20 years. Okay. Tell me about the floor of it. Okay. Um, I. Um, I'm gonna measure this up, Lee. Okay. Here. Record it. So push that red button one time. Uh huh. You see the REC in red? Yeah. Okay, push it one time, you'll see the REC disappear. 